Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, beautiful and smart and very interesting hoster is next to me. As you can see, this young lady wearing a very pretty uh, earring made by herself and she is the obviously a designer. Uh, we have done uh, a few weeks ago a fashion week show uh, Marquiers, right? Mm -hmm. At the at the uh, New, uh, Museum of New York, and I was filming for uh, the Indian designer, and uh, obviously uh, cast, uh, uh, collaborate with the designer and some of the models uh, that actually worked at that show. That the, the girl that you choose also worked with me in the past, so kind of it becomes a consistent collaboration when uh, you meet people through introduction. So you kind of know that uh, uh, who makes sense and what. Uh, can you tell my audience uh, about you, about your collection? Wh wh who are you? Okay, so I'm an architect by training and uh, I got into class just because um, that was my final year thesis. I've been doing class for the past 20 years. Oh, thank you. I've been uh, working with class for the past 20 years. Um, I used to do a lot of sculpture, but now I've gotten into jewelry um, just because I wanted to create something different um, that had meaning and uh, symbolism and things like that. So, um, But then for the New York Fashion Week, I've created this new collection that I'm showing today, um, collaborated with the Indian designer. And um, we have year crafts and we have this collection, which is taking off in New York City very well. Um, they're calling it the Chanel look um, and it's contemporary and it's very clean lines um, uh, and it gleams like crystals. So um, we presented it at the New York Fashion Week at the Marker Show. It was received very well. Um, press agent uh, Yvonne Camacho of Absolute Modern, um, she signed me on immediately and I've been working with her. Um, tomorrow, um, Princess Monica Lewinstein is going to be here uh, at uh, the Calorie Tavern uh, um, restaurant uh, tomorrow evening on the east side. And she would like to see the collection as well. So I will be bringing um, more of these earrings for them. Uh, also, model Avadora Mimuni is going to be there. And uh, we're going to have another event also on October 19th where... Um, um, Avatora might wear my jewelry. I also have uh, other uh, models who are wearing um, my jewelry and really taking to it. Um, Alvi and Shun um, in New York City and Cole Woods uh, in LA is going to wear it for the LA Fashion Week on October 7th and October 10th. So yeah, the, the, the models, the supermodels, the agents, they're all taking to it really well. So Alex, I'm very excited to bring this jewelry to the people. Guys, uh, stay tuned in. Uh, we'll be back with you in, in a minute. Okay, uh, guys, we continue. Uh, let's uh, go back to the uh, interview. So we're talking about jewelry. And uh, my first question to you, you did a little bit of introduction, who you are and uh, how you uh, come out. How do you make sure the jewelry gets sold. It's so nice to have beautiful models. It's beautiful uh, production. It's uh, going to so many shows. But uh, how do you know what sells, what doesn't sell, and why? What's the process from likes and uh, followers and, oh, beautiful, I love it, I, I want it for free, to actually paying clients? In my view, when I was watching your show, right, you saw I was filming like three, four video cameras, couple of photo cameras. I had like five people filming for that day, by the way. Uh, so I was filming primarily, the, I was watching the uh, important, the, the guests, the VIP folks, mm -hmm. and I was looking primarily, are they looking at the garment? Are they looking at the model? Are they cheering for the jewelry or for the, because sometimes they love the, the model. They don't care for the what she wears. Sometimes they love the garment, but they don't care for jewelry for, uh, they don't, uh, sometimes it's a friend of the makeup artist or hairstylist. How do you distinguish with the eyes? And you have to be there physically present in the show to see when the particular uh, item strikes. Like, how do you move to the next step? What are the more important steps? Because people think, oh, you have to do the fashion show. And then what? Once you do it, how do you move the item to the stores? How do you move it to make a sale? How do you uh, promote uh, next? That is a great question, Alex. And uh, there is no right and wrong answer. Um, how tips will help. I, I, what, you know, I just let it flow with me. Uh, you have to understand something about glass. 
class artists are different from any other kind of artist. Why? Because we make these incredibly beautiful things. And, um, and, and you know, I got a great feedback from the crowd, from whoever was there. They really loved the jewelry. And to answer another question that you said, there were, there were like, I think about 10 or 11 models. One of the models came in late, so she did not wear my jewelry. And many people after the show came to me and asked me, did you run out of jewelry? Why didn't the model wear the jewelry? So that for me was oh, an that, indicator. That's interesting. Uh, yes. Mo- they noticed that. And I said, because she was late, she wore the garment and she ran to the run, r- runway. She, I didn't even see her. So for me, that was a very, even though she didn't wear it, for me, that was a very happy moment. Um, but, you know, you asked me, how do I sell? When I make jewelry, you have to understand, I am an artist. I'm not a businesswoman. In fact, I'm the worst businesswoman. And you're both. And, and the thing is, when I make each piece, I want to make it in the best possible way. That's all I think about. And how and, and I and I work with clear glass because I feel that you can wear it any time a woman you, can you, it you know the upstairs, the next floor, we have a free huge one of the biggest art uh, studios for glass in Brooklyn. Yeah. And, and you can and this is brick yeah. so brick this is brick art media center. So yeah. this is the floor where we're filming. Right. But the if you go to the next floor that's when you where you can produce glass. Right. Uh, and not and not many people know that uh, it's a kind of expensive and tom- complicated equipment needs to be done. So if people want to experiment and practice, this is the best uh, probably art, uh, glass artists in Brooklyn uh, come here. Absolutely. So no, but then also you have to uh, bear in mind that you know you get you get like you know you get like these really nasty burns. You get burns all the time, um, and then you know so it's. The making glass jewelry is in itself such a long and tedious and difficult process. I've been doing glass for 20 years, so actually more like 18 years. And, you know, you just keep getting better and better. And um, and then now I'm at this point where, you know, I can make anything. If you give me any design, I can make it. And the thing is that, you know, when people came back to me after so when i when i was uh when i when i met this i just happened to meet the international designer by chance and she saw my work and she said let's collaborate let's do the new york fashion show i said okay let's do the new york fashion show after that was over um yvonne camacho uh, signed a contract with me right away uh alvi inshin cole woods you know supermodels they connected with me and said hey can i wear your jewelry People have been calling me and asking me, how do I how do I buy your jewelry? A, a lady came just now and she said, can I buy your jewelry? What I'm trying to say is that when you create a beautiful product and you give it your best, people will find you. Let me come back. Maybe you didn't understand my question. Let me rephrase it. Uh, a few weeks ago, maybe, actually, last, last weekend, uh, Raj Paul, if you know Raj, uh, uh, his daughter was getting married. Okay. And uh, I was filming, that's an uh, Indi- Indian family uh, wedding, and obviously the dr- everything is expensive. The dress could be like $50,000, and uh, you, you, like, you know, it's a lot of uh, gold and a lot of you know diamonds, you know, Indian tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the the bride and groom sit on the couch, like similar to this one, much much more fancier one, and everybody comes and bring the gifts and uh, the gold. Uh, so a dress like that, if you wearing something so expensive, would require quite expensive jewelry, mm-hmm. uh, custom made. So that's a, a great market for the custom made uh, jeweler of that magnitude because. I probably she was wearing maybe five, ten pounds of uh, jewelry on herself, and maybe like fifty pound dress. I don't know. That dress was really, really heavy. Uh, uh, it's a very complex. It's a piece of art. How do you find and uh, find that kind of market? Do you go to bridal shows? Like, how do you find th- those uh, people who have a big event of like that uh, when? hundreds of people coming to the wedding mm-hmm. and they need a uh, uh, expensive gift and they, uh, this is like a perfect uh, fit because you come from uh, 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 Eastern Asia or like a uh, uh, South Eastern Asia region and uh, whether it's Pakistani or like an Indian or Bangladesh wedding those weddings usually have uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, family members and that's a perfect market uh, for your jewelry uh, especially with you having your heritage like that, I think that's a natural market where you can sell it. Uh, is it 
by finding all the models from uh, that region or, or reaching to the other markets like how do you find those brights because for me well, when i do i you know i'm a designer so I, when i show my, my collection i choose usually models not based on their like uh, looks but more like a uh, who is getting married soon or who is looking to get married so i know if they love my garments they buy it mm -hmm. because i i my wedding collection is glow in the dark fashion i i use mostly feathers and fur uh so if they like the garment on the runway there is a chance that they will take it home for their for their wedding yeah. uh, uh so i kind of uh, i don't want to bring back the garments uh, after the show i want to sell it right there now, so for me if i find the the models who fit in that kind of a criteria mm -hmm. there is a chance that they will buy it and uh, if, not just i'll give it to them but buy it how do you find the pr right models for your show yes i will find so for me i feel that uh, for i feel that uh, for my jewelry, I like to have a wide variety of women. Um, mostly the women who buy my jewelry I, I are mostly in the 30s and 40s. I mean, I've been checking Instagram to see who's liking my work more, mm -hmm. uh, you know, go through insights and all that. So I've been checking that. And then it's mostly the 30s, 40s and 50s, you know, some of the 20s, mm -hmm. but it's mostly 30s and 40s and 50s generations who are buying my work. Um, I think also it has to do with price point um, because, you know, once you get your 30s, you're you know pretty established now if you're like Swaraj Paul's daughter it's another matter but mostly people you know because glasses it's coming from New Zealand it's coming from Italy it's an expensive material um, and then I also combine it with silver I combine it sometimes I combine yeah. it with other pearls um, and uh, other other pr precious metals and so uh, that's one way um, and as far as models are concerned I grow across the board and for me that is uh, an important point I like to uh, include all women of all uh, uh, uh skin tones to wear my my jewelry because i think that you know uh, it should it should uh, jewelry should transcend culture it should it should bring you know it's about women empowerment for me you know when it, when when a woman wears my jewelry she should feel that she's special and that's why if you see the way i've designed it also it makes your head stand up mm -hmm. and that is that is a particular thing that I have done with my jewelry. As far as selling it, um, I think shows are very important because it gives the kind of coverage that no other medium can give me. Um, oh, you know, and I'm hoping to get some celebrities. Uh, like I said, Avatora might uh, be wearing my, my gown. I'm looking not necessarily for celebrities. I'm just looking for extremely wealthy families. Even if the lady is like in her 50s, in, even if he's a curvy lady, as, as long as I know that she can buy lots of it right. and she can afford it and her, all her friends are like that, I like to have her in my uh, show. Even the audience sometimes say, oh, how come he have overage uh, girl or someone uh, short or someone, you know, like not a standard, like a variety, but in, I have diversity in that sense. Right. What I try to go, that uh, make sure that every model in my collection comes from extreme wealth. Okay. Uh, so when they have that wealth, Guess what? Who who's coming to see their show? Same wealthy people, their friends, yeah. and uh, that's uh, they see her. The husband, how the husband let her walk away from the show without buying the the garment that she was modeling. Maybe she will never ever wear it, uh, like a uh, like a be in a fashion show. She's like 40, 50 years old, you know. But it's a platform for the uh, strong, powerful women who have, uh, I would say. Their own businesses, their own, uh, uh, like they are a travel agency, a doctor, a lawyer. It doesn't have to be like a, a model in the, per se. It could be just someone who, who comes from uh, ability. And when those people who can afford that wear this, that's built like one monkey see what the other does. And uh, it's, uh, they, they follow the trend. They see wealthy people wearing that, that stuff. And they also see, okay, if I wear that uh, glasses or, or, or this uh, jewelry i might be also perceived a wealthy person right that is a very good point and that is a great way i think uh, i think you've given me a very good <laughs> tip alex i think that's a very nice way to look at it but i also think that you know women uh, I think by nature, we are always trying to um, improve or we like to, women like beautiful things. It is across the board. You know, that's why they tell oh, a diamond is a woman's best friend and things like that, because women just like beautiful things. Yes. And if you, if you put a beautiful piece of jewelry on a beautiful woman and that woman is walking across the runway, every woman who's sitting there says in her mind, 
I used to be that woman where I would look at it and say, I could be that woman if I wore this beautiful jewelry. If I wore this and I actually went to the gym and I worked out, then I could actually be slimmer and I could actually wear this and carry this off. Now, I might not do the second part, but I will do the first part. I will buy the jewelry. So the thing is, I find that uh, it is... In my case, mostly the, it's the guys who buy the jewelry, not the girls. Very it's a, it's a gift That's item. Right. The guys see, oh my God, this girl is beautiful. This is beautiful. Let me buy it for my wife. Right. A, a woman would uh, choose and will try to do it cheaper and find it online and whatever. She, she does her research, but the guys don't know any better. That's the only fashion show they ever went in their life. They went there, they see, they want to bring something home to, to the wife, say to the daughter, and say, "I saw that. I thought it will be uh, bring smile to your face. Y y maybe you like it." They are not doing that much shopping like the girls do. Like I'm very, very precise. They don't bargain uh, far. Yeah. My my uh, my uh, question. Next question uh, to you is: uh, How do you pose and demonstrate jewelry on the runway many people think that a runway is primarily for the garment to show the uh, uh, the claw uh, the clothes the the shoes but uh, sometimes it's a jewelry uh, runway obviously we, we i choose to put the girls in like all black so it's no attention goes anywhere else and pay attention to the glamour and the like beauty look like so the makeup obviously matters the hair styling matters so i understand the hair has to be up so you can see the uh, earrings and stuff but any advice for the girls how to walk and how to present the jewelry do they have to hold the pose do they have to move in the head how do you bring attention to particular art uh, gar a garment uh, uh, not a garment but uh, to a jewelry Okay, so um, the ring, like right. So uh, when I do my show in February, what I'm planning to do is um, I, I'm going to give different looks because a woman will dress differently at different times of the day or for whatever occasion. So I'm going to have women who are opening their hair, you know, just leaving their hair unbound, and there'll be women with the big coiffure on the uh, on the head. And so it's uh, different uh, things that I want to do, but also. Very importantly, um, I'm, I want to bring jewelry back with a very big statement um, so that jewelry and clothing come together. So I'm going to start creating jewelry that you can actually attach to the clothes. So it, it becomes mm -hmm. an extension of the dress. No, it's it, it will become a pattern of the dress itself. Like instead of mm -hmm. thread work, now I will bring jewelry that actually connects to the body. The, 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 the jewelry will be attached to the clothes so that it becomes mm -hmm. a part of the dress yeah, itself. Some, you know, people wear jewelry on different parts of the Exactly. Body. So then, you know, how do you create those linear lines and what do you do? Is it the swirling lines and things mm -hmm. like that? So I'm going to create that whole uh, look my my spring collection i'm planning to because uh, with the last collection uh, in fall we did all black and white but this collection is going to be primarily full of color there will be jewelry in the hair because you know i i want to alex i want to step away from the conventional approach to jewelry can i you know you just killed my next question uh, to you but uh, maybe uh, you will reconsider uh, and uh, you take a different position uh as you can see here's in the audience we have andy anderson and andy is known for his body uh, painting art mm -hmm. And I was thinking maybe if, uh, since I have both of you here in studio today, uh, I introduce you and maybe do a show when Andy paints the models and uh, they wear your jewelry. So the attention goes, there is no garment. There is just the body. There is just the girl. And uh, there is a uh, paint and the, the jeweler. So that way they... The jewelry does not compete with the garment. Exactly. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, of course, there is, you know, not much to put other jewelry, but maybe we can uh, figure out like some artistic way uh, to put those things together. I, I love that idea. I am all about doing everything that is out of the box. So instead of doing the conventional earrings and the necklace and all that, I mean, you, we can even go beyond that because I think the world is just transforming itself so much that people want something different. And I think as designers, it is our duty to provide provide that. So I I did the Year cuff, which was received so well um, at the at the New York Fashion Week, but this time now I want to do you know and and you just pressed upon a very important point, which is I want to bring jewelry directly on the skin, and we can do that. We can easily make that happen so that the jewelry and um, uh, the skin kind of that you know they kind of go together, and then uh, we create like it you know we, we garment becomes garment becomes an accessory, and the accessory becomes the main thing. 
May I share with you one more idea? Oh, we're here at Brick, and during this fashion week, uh, what I have done, I have done like uh, on, before the show that we met, mm -hmm. I was filming actually my fashion week here. So I produced the fashion week in this own studio and next studio, like a, a studio is bigger than this, like half, like twice of the size of this studio. So what I did, I brought a lot of models, mm -hmm. I brought designers, mm -hmm. like, and I did the show pretty much with no or, uh, no audience. I had only buyers. So I brought a couple of people like uh, from Russia, from Ukraine, they actually who came to buy uh, collections. Mm -hmm. I, they are the only one, basically, uh, maybe the parents and the assistants uh, uh, here, but I didn't have the major audience. But what happens is, because it's free, mm -hmm. uh, the I, I have no expense uh, for the uh, rental, and uh, because it's proper lighting and proper uh, pictures and video, so we got uh, really good pictures, we got really good uh, video, we got, uh, you know, the actual people who can buy it uh, ca came in and, and they didn't stay in the crowd and they actually could actually touch it and look at it and uh, see the process and we, we did pretty much the whole fashion show, but wouldn't, uh, would lack of so it was still kind of upscale i would say uh, work but at the same time it was very very affordable maybe we can uh, do some uh, show here for jewelry when we can actually film it like a uh, turn around with the cameras and uh, you know uh, do it here but not having all the other uh, uh, expenses because what i see the way the reason why instagram and snapchat all this new social media wins because there is no more expense of modeling agencies no more expense for the rental they just people post a couple of pictures on instagram and sales uh, there you, you don't need uh, the old way of doing things it still can do things uh, the old way but there is a future absolutely and why not if you if the facilities are available then we should make use of it because like you know the designer that i worked with and she's gone back to india but you have to keep moving with it you know you have to connect with the right people like you are the right person in the right business you know you're you're doing fashion you're you know you're out there you're meeting the people and so you, even though i'm in kansas city i like to come very often and meet people like you and you know when when you know the these kind of uh, so shows give that platform where we you know if you and i had would not have met if i had not come for the new york fashion week so mm -hmm. that is but that is the stepping point and i don't want to stop there and i want you to keep continuing on instagram or like you, but it's this, it's a little a little bit different when you yeah meet it's a little detached like, uh, uh, yeah uh, you know as someone uh, introduce and say right working with this one let, let's right let's because people always ask me they look at my jewelry they're like oh my gosh this is this looks really heavy it's nice but it looks really heavy and i'm like touch it it's like one ounce it's one ounce 1.2 ounce that's all it is they're like really and i'm like yeah that's the you know how you trick the eye right you make mm -hmm. it look like it's heavy but it's not so jewelry and things like that like fur you know all the things that you do the accessories you need to touch it feel it you know, um, try and wear it or, you know, like touch it to get an idea of what it what it really feels like. And then, because it's a wearable art, right? It's something that you wear on your body. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I think that, in, but the only thing with Instagram and, and Facebook is that it, it detaches the viewer from the maker. Whereas, you know, opportunities like this, like platforms like this will actually create that that interface it, it 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 you are directly dealing with the with the buyer and and there's nothing quite like it um and you know it's really nice to have these to see these people where you know you can you can take um jewelry you know really alex i i hope at at some point you know we take away the attention from the the garments and kind of really celebrate the idea of the accessories you know whatever they are because i feel like it's always the the the, the second consideration okay. one more thing if you start watching my shows uh, uh, fashion shows you would see i'm very different from many designers when i come as a designer on a runway i have a few other people coming with me i also bring my uh, head of makeup and i also bring uh, the head of uh, hair styling because i think it's i'm not the only one who create the look i the, we we are a team so he or she had a team of people uh, having a vision so it's a joint bow it's not just a designer bow so i think it's it would be fair if uh, 
Uh, what's your name? The Indian, uh, the designer. Uh, uh, Ashna, if she would come to that uh, show bow with you, uh, uh, not just by herself, because it's uh, you also a uh, substantial part of that collection. So it's fair to have a, a, a joint bow, uh, bow in, the, in that sense. Usually, just the designer comes in, take take all the credit, and everybody like jewelry people, the makeup and hair people uh, stay behind, and, and that's also uh, uh, something that really makes the the show. But I did see that at the New York Fashion Week, um, or rather, I was told that the the designer before that she actually brought yes. her entire crew, yes, and 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 yes. th and that she was amazing. She everybody. everybody. That's everybody. That, that was, was I that saw, was really I that one. That, yeah, that was, uh, like, yeah. She did pretty much the same like I I did like her, right my way. But I don't see that often. Uh, people unfortunately do that, that does not happen very often. But you're absolutely right. If you can if you can think like that, I think that you know that's that's you know where you're inclusive and you bring everybody in mm -hmm. and you give that respect to everybody the you know and then people will just keep getting better and better because we're a team now we're not just one person who's driving the show and uh, because like you correctly said the makeup artist the hairstylist jewelry garment we all are a family and we make something beautiful together and present it to the world and that needs to be shown you know every person needs to be given its credit so I'm so glad you think like that uh, tell the audience what's your Instagram, what's your how to buy the jewelry, what's the way to reach out. You can reach out to me um, through Instagram, and my uh, the, my ID is uh, Glass Concepts three sixty underscore Hasna. That's G L A S S C O N C E P T S underscore uh, sorry three sixty three six zero underscore Hasna. I'm also on Facebook. Um, as uh, Class Concepts 360. Um, and then um, I'm also, I have my website, which is www.glassconcepts360.com. That's Glass Concepts and then the numerals 360.com. So yeah, you can reach me anytime. And if there's something you have in mind or you want to look at my collection, the collection that I did for the New York Fashion Week is new. So um, I haven't put it uh, on my website yet, but it's on Instagram and it's on Facebook. So definitely, I mean, I've been getting um, quite a few calls. In fact, I just got uh, an email from a, a producer in Puerto Rico. He wants to use uh, my my jewelry for his movie. Um, uh, and he's won a Cannes Film Festival before. Um, so and then yeah and then then I've had models calling me to say that they want to wear my jewelry to the um, LA Fashion Week and you know all that so it's been it's been received really well it's been a great experience and and I'm hoping that you know uh, more of it get the word gets out and you know it, it'll it'll really help a lot thank you thank you Alex I appreciate it thank you for the time cut okay so